after I went to Yale Law School. I studied for the bar in Sacramento at the governor's mansion. I was just looking at law books, falling asleep, it's so tedious. And then I walked down the stairs, I saw my father and I could hear him. They were talking about who's gonna run for governor, Pat Brown or the speaker, Jess Hunter. I found that very exciting. There was a vitality, an intensity, maybe like watching an exciting movie, but it wasn't a movie, it was a reality that was imaginable for me to be a part of. That was former four-term governor of California, Jerry Brown, talking about what inspired him to get into politics. His decades-long political career is the subject of a new PBS American Masters documentary titled Jerry Brown, The Disruptor. And Jerry Brown is with us now. Also with us, the documentary's director, Marina Zinovich. Uh, so, so uh, I, uh, Marina, the challenge, the great challenge here is there is so much to tell. You think about Jerry Brown talking about 1966. His dad loses to Reagan in 70. He comes back. He's the only Democrat elected statewide. He's got his first career there. Then he's got a second career as, as mayor of <laughs> Oakland, third career as governor of California. Absolutely remarkable political life. Uh, talk, about, talk about how difficult that was to get all of that in one documentary. Well, you know, you could have made a film about any segment of Jerry's life that you just spoke about, but we wanted to chronicle the whole thing because what a life. I mean, he was someone who lived how many lives between everything you listed, governor, mayor, running for president. He was a man ahead of his time, an intellectual thinker. And the impetus for the film was really what if you were lucky enough to have the same job at 72 that you had at 36? So. Yeah, and and in, in, in both cases, Governor, uh, you were a disruptor. You were a disruptor in your 30s. You were a disruptor in your 70s. Uh, I, I just uh, reading, uh, looking back at all the things you did, uh, it is, it, it, I mean, not, not playing by the political rule book really does serve you and others if they do it well. Talk about it. Well, uh, yeah, disruption is uh, the, the preliminary step. You've got to break things up to open them up for something different and better. But I do think at the end of trying to fight the status quo and, and the conventional wisdom, uh, there were a lot of real solid achievements in climate and prison reform and education and uh, actually in tax fairness. So it's a combination. And I, I think Disruptor captures uh, part of that. It's, it's a good image. Uh, but along with that, you ought to see that that paves the way or something even better. Yeah, well, you know, you, you talk about climate, you can talk about tax fairness, you can talk about revitalization of Oakland, but you can also talk about fiscal responsibility. There, right here, I just want to read this part. You sold the governor's executive jet and began flying commercial, sent back all personal gifts to the governor's office, chose not to live in the mansion, rented a $275 a month apartment, uh, didn't uh, have a chauffeur, you walked to work uh, and drove a Plymouth satellite, and your fiscal restraint resulted in one of the biggest budget surpluses in state history, roughly $5 billion. So, this wasn't even, uh, you know, I ideologically slanted to one side. You just, it was just like what made sense for the state or the city at the time, right? Well, it, it made sense. And also, uh, I was born in 1938 and went right into uh, World War II. My parents lived a relatively simple life, a nice life, middle-class life. But we didn't have all the luxuries and the entertainment and the amusements that you have today, the luxuries. So I've always been uh, put off by uh, too much, having too much, or uh, also displaying uh, the ind indicia of, of wealth and power and what I'd call indulgence. And then add to that, I spent almost four years in a Jesuit seminary uh, before Vatican II, time of Pius XII, very austere, silence, speaking Latin, manual labor, cleaning out toilets, sweeping floors. So I had a different uh, sensibility, a different compass. 
as I came into government. And then, of course, this was the time of the failed Vietnam War. You know, millions of people died in Vietnam for a crazy war. Uh, and then we had uh, Nixon and Watergate. So all that uh, led to a skepticism of the status quo. The custodians of what was were not impressive to me. So I wanted to move them aside. And that was really uh, certainly an important part of my motivation. So, Governor Brown, your public life has extended practically over 60 years across two American centuries, the 20th and the 21st that we're in now. I can recall when you were running for president in the New Hampshire primary, and you were speaking of future problems back then in the 70s. If you look at it today, what do you think? What would you tell the United States of America, the voting public population of America today? What are our two or three biggest problems right now and going forward? Well, uh, they're, they're, they're equal and they're big. Uh, first of all, we're living in an unsustainable way. The oil, the gas, the coal, we're going to have to get off that. There's no question that's the science. And that's going to be extremely hard. It's going to take bipartisan leadership. It's going to take investment to help those uh, who can't make the transition because of their, their income, their low income. Secondly, we have an unfair society. We have uh, not a few million, but tens of millions of people whose families uh, are, are chaotic. Uh, who don't have the income security to live uh, anywhere near a decent life. And that income disparity, uh, it affects uh, blacks and Latinos, but whites and uh, kid, uh, guys who did, or ladies who didn't get out of co uh, go to college or work in a job whose jobs have been taken to China or Malaysia or some other place. So we have the uh, inherent uh, conflict of a very and increasingly inegalitarian society, unequal in the extreme. And then we have the unsustainability uh, that we're just playing with the climate in a way that it's going to come back to bite us. And then if I had a third one, uh, we're on the brink of war, uh, that uh, war in Ukraine could escalate uh, to a third world war. We're getting ready to fight China. I mean, it's incredible uh, the way the Pentagon sees their role. And at the same time, there's no effort uh, to quiet things down. Uh, even under George Bush, under Reagan, there were real moves to deal with the adversary. Right now, it's all what they call competition, conflict, and, uh, you know, you talk about uh, uh, Kennedy and the conspiracy. Uh, we're seeing a world where it's all against America. We've got to fight back. Well, I think we need more common sense, uh, uh, um, understanding of what I call planetary realism. We're all on one planet, all 8 billion, and we're threatened by virus. We're threatened by climate change, disruptive climate change. We're threatened by nuclear proliferation, by the risk of nuclear blender. And now with AI and all the rest uh, going on, uh, we don't know how, how a, a ride we're going to be taking. So it's time uh, to talk sense. And right now they're fighting in Washington over nonsense. The big issues are being ignored. Uh, worse now than when I ran in 76 uh, in, in 92. Governor Brown, it's Jen Psaki. I, we've all been feeling a little dark this morning after the Republican debate. Last night you've spent so much time in public service serving twice as governor. Are there politicians out there, maybe up and coming people who give you hope, who you're watching for, who we should all be paying more attention to? Well, I'm generally not in the hope business. Uh, I'm very uh, <laughs> I tried. And, uh, I, I, you know, I, I like what I'm doing. I've never been happier here on my ranch where my grandmother uh, grew up. Uh, but when I look out at the world, uh, well, I'm chairman uh, of the Bulletin of Atomic Scientists. We put out the doomsday clock and we tell you how close are we to extinction? Well, 90 seconds is the metaphor. That's too close for comfort. So, yeah, I'm not going to give you any name of the great leader. I don't see it at this point. All right. I'm not in the hope business. Let's uh, save that quote. Uh, make sure you watch the documentary from PBS, American Masters, Jerry Brown, The Disruptor. It's available to stream right now on PBS.org. We want to thank former California Governor Jerry Brown, and we, we certainly want to thank Director Marina Zinovich. Thank you so much for bringing this incredible story to us, Marina. We greatly appreciate it. Thanks for having us.